I want to move now to the issue of free speech that's infected universities across the Western world. For too long, the erosion of free speech has been met with little resistance, but that might be about to change. In recent days, Oxford University Pro Vice-Chancellor Professor Martin Williams has told students who were opposing a pro-women's rights speaker at the university that they must be prepared to encounter and confront difficult views, including ones they might find unsettling, extreme or even offensive. To tell us more about this fight back for women, Helen Joyce, Director of Advocacy at UK's pro-women's group, Sex Matters. Welcome, Helen. Well, I have to say a big hallelujah here. Let's hope it comes off. But for an Oxford professor to tell students they've got to listen to opposing views, that's what university used to be about. But this is a huge move. Are we starting to see the beginning of the end for those who want to silence the views of biological women? I think we're st certainly seeing an inflection point. I think the end is a very long way away, though. I mean, of course, many professors have spoken up for free speech. What's new about this is that it's somebody high up in the um, administration of one of the big old universities because they've been shamefully silent while all of this has been going on. And also there was a letter from more than 100 students supporting free speech and saying to other students, stop this. And that this is all about the most ridiculous thing. It's about just saying that male and female are real categories. Like, it's not even like people are trying to debate, you know, Israel-Palestine or, I don't know, like some other really controversial issue. Everybody knows that there are male and female people, but you're not allowed to say that. So it's even about the most ridiculous topic you could imagine. Talk to me about Baroness Faulkner. She's the head of the Equalities and uh, Human Rights Commission in the UK, like Australia's Human Rights a commission. She's been savage with sexist and racist attacks by pro-trans supporters for daring to request that biological women be given legal protection in single-sex spaces like hospitals and changing rooms. This has been front page news in the UK. Tell us more, Helen. It's absolutely extraordinary. Kishwar Faulkner is an incredibly admirable person who has fought through significant racism and sexism herself to become a peer and who has been a brilliant, brilliant manager at the uh, Equality and Human Rights Commission, which is the official body that holds the ring on all nine protected characteristics like age, race, sex, uh, being transgender, that sort of thing. And she has taken the body back from being a super ideological organisation focused entirely on trying to change the law in a direction that would completely uh, rule out sex meaning anything, uh, to be very much more thoughtful and to intervene, for example, on free speech and freedom of belief and as a result she's facing a witch hunt there's no other word for it there apparently have been more than 40 complaints made by 12 different individuals and this is really just because she has said that we must actually protect the category of sex male and female as well as of transgender mm. status so she's not saying anything anti-trans not at all and some of the complaints are ridiculous that she rolled her eyes in a meeting or that she spoke for too long this sort of thing but they brought in an external investigator and i think that they're trying to throw her under the bus but the um, the response has been quite heartening. It's been front page news, like you said. I think a critical mass of people, mm. both in politics and in the country at large, understand how serious this is and that this could be a flashpoint that we have to all stand up at. I go back to the point you made at the top of the, the um, segment when you said this is a potential inflection point. I think you're absolutely right when you put the two of those together. And of course, on Monday, uh, the UN Special Rapporteur on Violence Against Women and Girls uh, put out quite a seismic statement that says the first world needs to stop silencing women using threats and intimidation slurs like Nazi and extremist. Uh, we've seen that here in Victoria in Australia. An MP more redeeming has been expelled from the party uh, for all of these things. She's fighting it, of course, now through the courts. But how important is this for the UN to start to acknowledge the human rights of biological women just to be heard? That's all we're asking for, just to be heard. How important is it? So what you have to understand about these special rapporteurs is their external unpaid roles. So there's another UN <laughs> external special rapporteur called Victor Madrigal Borlots, who constantly tweets exactly the opposite, that women are bigots for saying that sex is real. He came to the UK very recently. Uh, some of my colleagues met him. And he just afterwards put out the most extraordinary and vicious statement about how trans rights were being destroyed in the UK. So Reem al Salem is being very, very brave in this because she is standing up within an institutionally misogynistic organisation and saying what the UN in general does not 
say, which is sex is real, binary, immutable, recognizing that matters for everybody's rights. It matters, by the way, especially in poor countries where women suffer all sorts, like, you know, they mm. die in childbirth and so on. Uh, so, yeah, she's being very brave, but don't think that this is the UN turning. It isn't. Uh, salient reminder. Helen Joyce, thank you.